Dr. Dennis, another hot topic these days is about personal branding. And I feel that personal branding should be continuous and not just during the job search, it should start before. And I always tell my clients that personal branding, content creation and networking, those are three things that are very much related to each other and they should continue doing it even if they, even they have a job. So in that sense, what tips you have for people international students or immigrants that personal branding for them is an unfamiliar word and they don't know how to do it. Yeah, I th it's a great question. I think you have just think of it this way. If it's hard for you to think about because of the culture that you come from talking about yourself, right, or branding yourself, it sounds like a corporate thing, you know, it's like You're selling oh, yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go brand yourself, you know. Yeah. So, you know, there's so think about it this way. Really, what you're doing is you're articulating your sense of who you are. That's what you're doing, right? And we all want to know. First of all, we all want to be somebody, but we also want to know who somebody is, right? So think about the question being more like you are, you are attempting to answer the question, tell me about yourself. And you're trying to do it in a way that is... Um, that is that creates a little bit of a doggy head tilt. So somebody goes, hmm, really? You know, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And that you appear to be the exotic bird or the unique creature that, you know, who you are, right? You are this unique individual. Yes. And that you're picking those highlighted moments from your life to, to connect the dots that we spoke about earlier on. So don't think about it as necessarily this corporate-like initiative or this giant uh, puzzle. It mm -hmm. really is something that you define and only you know the answer to. In fact, when I wrote the book, I, I often were, you know, during the release, people would ask me, you know, so when you wrote the book, you know, why did you do it? Why did you think it was time for you to share your story? And it's no, 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 that's not it. It's actually, I wrote the book. So for others, I wrote a book for you so that you could tell your story. I'm just providing a way to organize your story. Mm -hmm. So think about what you're doing is um, I have a good friend, uh, Daniel Bennett, and he's the associate director of the New York uh, Jazz Academy down in Times Square. He's a performing artist. He performs. He does the uh, plays the clarinet, the sax. He's a phenomenal and the flute, uh, jazz. Wow, he's amazing. And I had him talk at a retreat we did in the Berkshires up in North Adams, Mass. And he said, "What music is is organized chaos. It's organized chaos. Notes are just notes, but you're yes. organizing them, right? Yes. And I'm, I'm, yeah, you know. So I, so think of your words as you're creating an organization of mm -hmm. letters and words." that are not chaotic anymore. They're harmonic, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they're catchy, they hook. They, they are in a way uh, like sheet music that you're, you're creating. And when you think about it that way, it's, it, I think it becomes much more achievable. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you're the author of your story. You're the best way to tell your story. And what you're providing is some guidance and directions based on your experience. That's right. And stop listening to these ridiculous mentors who you've seen do a poor job of storytelling. Mm. Where, well, you have to say why you went to this school this way. And just mm -hmm. knock it off. Don't listen to them. Understand the key moments in your life. Line them up. Speak off of them succinctly and make sure they are held together by a theme. Right. And once you do that, you're good. Thank you.